Picture this. It's nighttime, and you're driving down a quiet country road. Outside your window, there's this crazy thick fog. So dense, it feels like you're floating through a giant glass of milk. Naturally, your first instinct is to crank up the headlights, low beams, maybe even the high beams. But the second you do, boom. Everything goes white. A bright blinding wall appears right in front of you, and suddenly, you can't see a damn thing. So, what's going on here? Why does light, something that's supposed to help you see, turn into the problem? That's exactly what we're gonna break down today. We'll talk about why your regular headlights are pretty much useless in fog, why fog lights are mounted so low to the ground, and yeah, what color that light should be if you actually want it to help. But to really get it, we've gotta rewind a bit, back to the basics. What is fog anyway? Fog isn't smoke, and it's not steam either. It's basically a cloud at ground level, a floating soup of billions of tiny water droplets hanging in the air. Each droplet is somewhere between 10 and 50 microns across. That's about 10 times bigger than the wavelength of visible light. And when light hits those droplets, it doesn't just pass through like it does with air, it scatters. Hard. There's a name for this, me scattering. A specific kind of light scattering that happens when particles are way bigger than the light's wavelength. Unlike how light behaves in the atmosphere, where Rayleigh scattering makes the sky look blue, in fog, all colors scatter pretty much the same way. That's why white light stays white, and what you end up seeing is this glowing, white, murky mass in front of you. But here's the thing. Light in fog doesn't just bounce off surfaces like it does on a mirror. It gets re-emitted in all directions. Some of it goes up, some hits the ground, and a good chunk comes right back into your eyes. Now, think about what happens when you turn on your low or high beams in these conditions. On most cars, low beams are angled slightly downward, about 1 to 1.5%. Sounds technical, but what that really means is that even if you're looking 300 feet ahead, the light is only dropping maybe 3 to 15 feet. So the beam still shoots pretty far forward, about 100 to 150 feet, and ends up hitting that thick fog way out in front of your car. High beams? Even worse? They're designed to light up the road as far as 600 to 800 feet ahead. But in heavy fog, that light scatters off the droplets long before it ever hits the pavement. Instead of lighting the road, it breaks into billions of tiny rays that bounce around in the air, turning into a glowing white wall right in front of you. And the brighter your lights, the thicker and more blinding that wall becomes. So, ironically, the more powerful your headlights, the less you actually see. That's exactly why we have fog lights. First rule of fog lights. They're mounted low, just about as close to the ground as possible, usually somewhere between 10 and 24 inches off the ground. Why? Because fog tends to be less dense near the surface. The ground holds more heat, and right above it, there's often a thin layer where fewer droplets hang in the air, called the surface layer. Fog lights shine almost straight ahead, with just a slight downward angle, something like three to five degrees. They light up the road just ahead of your car, maybe 30 to 100 feet tops. And because they're skimming under the thickest part of the fog, they help you actually see the pavement, not just a glowing blur. Now let's talk about color. Why do proper fog lights shine yellow? Why not white, blue, or even purple? It comes down to physics. Visible light is made up of waves, with wavelengths ranging from about 400 to 700 nanometers. Shorter wavelengths, like blue and violet, scatter more easily. Longer wavelengths, like yellow and red, scatter less. So when light hits fog, which is basically a cloud of tiny water droplets, that short blue light gets lost fast. It scatters in every direction and turns the whole scene into a milky blur. But the longer wavelengths, like yellow and red, cut through much better. That's why the best fog lights have a color temperature between 2,700 and 3,000 Kelvin. That translates to a warm white or rich yellow glow. It has very little blue in it, and more of that reddish yellow mix that holds up better in fog. Now, here's a logical question. If red light scatters the least, why not make fog lights completely red, like, say, 2,000 Kelvin? Sounds smart, right? But here's where biology kicks in. Our eyes are most sensitive to light in the green-yellow range, around 550 to 570 nanometers. We don't see red as well, 
especially at night. It looks dim and dull, which means a red fog light would make the road look darker, and details would be harder to make out. That's not exactly helpful when you're already driving blind. So that's why 2,700 to 3,000 Kelvin hits the sweet spot. It's yellow enough to cut through fog, but still bright and clear to the human eye. But here's where a lot of drivers mess up in fog. They figure, hey, I need more light. So they flip on the high beams, thinking it'll punch through the mist. But that actually makes things worse. Some folks go even further. They turn on everything, low beams, high beams, fog lights, and even their daytime running lights. The result? A blinding white cloud around the car and almost zero visibility. The right way to drive in fog? Turn off the high beams. Use low beams and fog lights together. And if the fog gets really thick? Kill the low beams too. Just run your fog lights. Since they're aimed low, they don't light up the fog above, and you'll be able to see the road surface much more clearly. Here's something from an interesting experiment. Engineers placed a car on a test track filled with artificial fog. On the first run, they used standard low beam headlights. The fog was pretty light, just about half a gram per cubic meter, but visibility dropped to just 25 feet in front of the car. A dense white wall appeared almost instantly. On the second run, they used only the fog lights, mounted about 16 inches off the ground. This time, the road stayed clearly visible for about 65 to 80 feet ahead. The light didn't bounce around in the fog, it stayed low and spread softly across the asphalt. The difference? Night and day. That's why in real fog, fog lights aren't a luxury, they're a matter of safety. But here's something just as important. The fog lights need to be properly aimed. If they're pointed even a little too high, the beam starts to catch the droplets in the air, and that blinding effect comes right back. So, how do you know the alignment is right? The light should form a sharp, horizontal line across the road. There should be a clear cutoff point starting around 30 to 50 feet in front of the car. Right in front of your bumper, it should still be a little dim. But then, just ahead, the road should suddenly become visible with a clear stretch of light. If the beam lifts higher than that, you'll need to adjust the lights. Otherwise, all the benefits of fog lights go right out the window. Let's wrap it up with the key bit of physics. Fog looks white. Not because it is white, but because billions of tiny water droplets scatter all the light around us almost equally, in every direction. Sure, shorter wavelengths, like blue and violet, scatter more than longer ones, like red and yellow. But in fog, where the droplets are relatively large, those differences mostly cancel out. What we end up seeing is a soft white glow, like someone hung a massive glowing bedsheet in front of us and lit it up from every angle. And now, a few practical tips. If you find yourself driving through fog, don't try to speed up. Visibility can change drastically from one yard to the next. Turn on your fog lights along with the low beams. If visibility drops below 65 feet, slow down to a crawl. Use lane markings and reflective road signs to guide you. And if you absolutely have to stop, pull over as far as you can onto the shoulder and don't forget to turn on your hazard lights. Driving in fog is a strange and fascinating dance between physics, engineering, and biology. Where the light comes from, how it's aimed, and what color it is, all of that is based on how light behaves and how our eyes work. So next time you're driving through heavy fog, you'll know exactly why you shouldn't flip on your high beams, why fog lights are mounted so low, and why that warm yellow glow might just save your life. Thanks for sticking with us. If you enjoyed this breakdown of something ordinary through a scientific lens, give us a like and hit subscribe. We've got more coming. See you in the next episode.